Welcome back to Plaza de Libros TV. I'm your host, John Reza. Uh, shooting back over to uh, Los Angeles School of Global Studies. I'm going to deliver some books and talk to uh, one of the teachers there, Laura Cometa, who uh, I've known for a few years, and uh, talk about some of the projects she's working on and how it's impacting uh, her students there in the community of uh, the Pico Union area. Stay tuned. We're on the west side of downtown uh, here at the School of Global Studies at the Miguel Contreras Learning Center. Uh, here to drop off some of these books for uh, some break time reading. Uh, Laura's teaching in the class and uh, they're going to be reading some poetry. And one of them is uh, Loose Woman by Sandra Cisneros. And then one from our own uh, Luis Rodriguez, uh, Roche Moche, one of his poetry books. So they'll be studying these. Um, over the holidays and then uh, in the unit that starts just after the holidays. Hi, my name is Laura Cometa and I'm the lead teacher at LA School of Global Studies. And I actually first came to Libreria Martinez when I taught in, at Linwood High School. And I met John Reza and he kind of helped me introduce books to my students. Because at that time in Linwood we were only allowed to teach certain books that were in the curriculum. And I found that a lot of students really weren't that interested in the, in the core curriculum books. And I wanted to expose my students to literature that related more to their lives and their culture. So the way I did that was I asked the parents to bring in money and we actually went to John's store and bought, um, bought real copies of books to put in the students' hands. And from there, everything changed. The students started to love reading, they felt more inspired, um, and their love of reading just kept growing and growing. So from there, I've worked, I've been working with Libreria Martinez ever since to get books for my students. And some major improvements have been made. One being that now the principal actually sets aside a budget so that our whole school can get books paid for. And we buy books for all of our students and hopefully um, the effect we have is that they start loving to read and they start having more books in their homes so their younger brothers and sisters see these books surrounding them. Um, some of the examples, well every year we use a huge variety of books at our school. Even in the ninth grade alone we, you know, we probably have about a hundred different books that we offer the students and that's because we want to give the students some choice over the book they read. So like for a project on autobiographies, there might be some students reading A Child Called It, which is um, a, a lot easier. The English is a lot easier in here. Other students might be reading a book like Barack Obama's Dreams for My Father, which is more of an adult, um, geared toward adults. And I think this is important because here in LA, we have students entering our school at so many different language levels. Some students are coming from another country and they're trying to develop their English skills and I don't want to hit them over the head with you know this type of book when they're still trying to learn English. So I want to give them something that is still really gripping and um, it'll capture their attention, it will inspire them, but the language is accessible to them. So the students are getting the same um, messages and themes and they're able to analyze the literature, but it's just at different entry levels. We also do a poetry unit, and again, I try to choose books that are a little bit easier level, which is more accessible to some of the students who need more of an entry level book, like Cool Salsa, and then more um, classic books like Maya Angelou's poems, which again cover a lot of the same themes of racism, discrimination, oppression, but with a little more advanced language and something that's more of a challenge for some of the students. As we're reading all these books, the students also have the opportunity to read books in Spanish. So pretty much every book we read, they have the option, like when they read Across the Hundred Mountains, they can also read A Traves de Cien Montañas and read it in Spanish. Um, Burro Genius is another book that they could read in English and Spanish. Enrique's Journey is another book they can read in English and Spanish. In the Time of the Butterflies, Down These Mean Streets, and basically the list goes on and on. John helps me to find books that are high interest for the students that also are being published in English and in Spanish because 
there's certain kids that um, they speak Spanish, but they really haven't had the opportunity to read any books in Spanish yet in their education. And so here at this school, the School of Global Studies, we try to develop their reading abilities in English and in Spanish. And then in my class, what all of this leads to is the kids publishing their own books. Because I think it's important for kids to realize that they're not just consumers of books. Um, and it's not just passive. They're also reading these books to inspire them. And they too need to start publishing their own books. So we give them a start here at our school. The first book that we've published as a school was called Walking Through Walls. And in this book, every single ninth grader at our school chose um, a story or a poem that they wrote in the class to publish in this book. As they were reading all these other books, they, you know, they found a lot of inspiring techniques and themes and they could relate to their own life. And it gave them permission to really start expressing what they have seen here growing up in L.A. or um, growing up in another country and moving to L.A. What was really cool is after we published this book, Walking Through Walls, this became part of the reading collection. So now, not only do I have books from, you know, famous authors to choose from, but our students here at this school actually read the, the, stu the older students who have written their own books. And they treat this as literature as well, looking for techniques, everything from similes and metaphors to themes, themes of oppression, themes of resistance. Anything that they would get from a canonical writer, they can also get from their own writing. The next year, the students in my class published this book, Angelenos. It's actually twice as big as Walking Through Walls because this year they decided to put every single story in English and in Spanish. So again, they were really inspired by bilingual writers like Reina Grande. They, um, they felt that it was important to not only communicate their stories in English, but to be able to share their stories with a wider community including a lot of their own parents who only know how to read in Spanish. So in this book, Angelenos, as you can see on the front cover, these are all of the students who were in my ninth grade class. They're now um, 11th graders here at our school. And they each submitted a personal poem or a story about their lives in English and in Spanish. And the last book that just came out from our school is Behind Every Beautiful Eye. Detrás de cada ojo hermoso. And again, the stories, the stories are very personal, um, personal narratives, personal poems about what teenagers are going through here in LA. A lot of them also wrote stories dedicated to their parents. So they took the time to interview their parents and write down their parents' story of immigration or of life in another country because they knew that you know a lot of their parents won't get the chance to be in a book. And since they had the chance to be in a book, they took that opportunity to give it really to somebody else. So um, all of this, I think, is just a testament to show how important it is that we put the right books in our students' hands. A lot of teachers um, don't have access or don't think it's possible to give students the books they actually want to read. And sometimes students are given books that just don't relate to them and they just don't read it at all. And that just turns into a cycle of failure. They start failing school, the teacher thinks they're lazy. It leads to a lot of um, assumptions. But if we can first of all find the right books to put in the kids' hands, books that are at the right reading level for them, books that relate to their life, books that um, are maybe in English or in Spanish, depending on which they want to read, then I've found that they devour the books. They beg me for more books. They can't wait until the next project to start reading another book. And they become very avid readers and also authors themselves.